it is um, still relevant and it is still helpful for you as we navigate the end of this year and uh, we're towards the very very last few weeks of 2019 and um, I hope you guys are doing well I hope this video finds you well so without further ado um, I feel that um, the energy for this reading is really about you know
two people feel very, very connected, okay? Um, when they think about you, you know they're thinking about you, and it, it sort of like, you know, feeds into this uh, loop where you are you end up reverting to, you know, thinking about them and vice versa. So it's a situation where two people are very, very c deeply connected, really care about each other. There might be great compatibility as well. Really great compatibility between two people. Um, so for you, especially if you're in a long-distance relationship, I feel like there is an immense sense of longing, um, wanting to be together, wanting to connect, wanting to, you know, share the experience with another person. And then I also feel for others, um, there might have been a situation where it's like uh, distance, like admiring somebody from a distance is what I'm seeing. I have here the hermit and the hermit is a lonesome card it doesn't mean loneliness it seems to me like some type of remote viewing some type of like distance um, associated with you and another person and this combination the hermit and the nine of pentacles admiring somebody from afar admiring somebody's beauty admiring the way that they look and yet being so shy or so uh, hesitant about letting them know how you, how you feel about them, okay? So, if you're geographically distant from the person that is, you know, really occupying a lot of your, your, your thoughts and, and you're, you're thinking heavily about them, I feel like they are definitely also thinking about you. And then I also feel, you know, with Virgos are deeply shy by nature, and so I, I do sense that some of you might have somebody that you're really admiring from afar. You know, you're like um, wanting to touch them, wanting to talk to them, wanting to communicate, wanting to really tell, tell them how you feel. But in a way, your feelings for this person scares you. You like to be in control of your emotions. You're also very rational. And I've mentioned this before, but Virgo and people don't fall in love. Like love at first sight is not a thing for you guys. You can date somebody for a very long time, but if you haven't, you know, made up in your mind that you're in love with this person, you might not never fall in love with the person. So I feel like, you know, you're very sensible and just like even keel and level headed when it comes to relationships, when it comes to love, when it comes to emotional expression. And so I feel like you're you're feeling this wave of emotions overcoming you and you kind of, you know, shrug it off or cast it aside and you're like, that's not rational. I barely know this person. It's it's not rational, you know, to like be head over heels and and and, and fall in love with someone when I barely know them. So I feel like you you have someone that you're really admiring. You really like this person. They're very independent. Um, I'm, I'm getting a feeling of like somebody who might be, um, let me see, like um, somebody who's quite exotic, who, who you know, um, there, there's something unique about them. So the woman with the mole on her face, it's coming out, it, it's near her chin. So like, I feel like you're dealing with someone who's not stereotypically like it's not somebody that everyone would consider like classically beautiful or classically handsome but for whatever reason there's something about them they have um, charisma they have stage presence they have uh, magnetism there's something that that makes them very unique and other people cannot help but stare at them twice you know how there are some people they're not classically handsome or beautiful uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but there's something about them that's very alluring, and I feel like it has a lot to do with their confidence, the way they carry themselves, um, the way in, the way they carry themselves. Okay, this is a nine of pentacles, very independent, um, self-sufficient, bold. It's somebody who is like. Um, on the one hand, they can be very earthy, very easygoing, not high maintenance. You won't catch them, you know, uh, dressed to the T 
and like um, with full makeup on or you know cologne and hairspray and, and grease in their hair or whatever like they're not made up they're just understatedly like just uh, confident and, and put together without trying so hard. It's somebody that does everything with such grace and such ease. And I feel like because of that, a lot of people are very drawn to them. And then I also, going back to what I mentioned before, a lot of Virgo and people, you guys are really deeply very shy. You do get stage fright. You don't like to be on center stage. You don't like to have a lot of attention on you. You, you feel a little bit out of place. And for some of you, some of you, okay, please don't get offended. You might feel a, a little bit, you know, socially awkward in probably a social setting or in a setting where you don't know a lot, uh, a lot of people. Um, you might feel very socially awkward when you have to give a speech, give a talk, when uh, you're speaking and everyone is staring at you. Like, you, you don't like that attention. And so you admire this person for the, the, the bold and the, I guess, like the confident way in which they move through life the ease in which they do everything and the ease in which things just magically work out for this person so I feel like you really deeply admire this person um, and you might be admiring them from afar and I feel like for some of you they are also feeling that way about you but I feel that the gravity of your feelings for them it's overwhelming you you know, like, you're you're kind of dumbfounded about, like, I don't believe in first love at first sight. You know, why do I feel so strongly about this person when I barely know them? There's a little bit of intrigue and mystery here. Um, and it's like, you're, you might not know a lot about them. They might not know a lot about you. You might see each other casually in passing. And you might feel like, wow, that would be a really good person for me to date or for me to have as a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And I, I do sense like they have no idea how you feel. And so, you know, uh, trying to make conversation, um, making small talk. Virgos don't really like that, but like making small talk and uh, trying to get into their inner circle and, and trying to, I'm hearing infiltrate, you know, trying to, to like get one leg in the door, okay? I feel like that might be a, a really good first step because they might not have an idea as to how strongly you feel about them and you're kind of scared of the impact that they're having on you all right so let me just um that's for like singles i feel like there's someone who's really capturing your imagination and uh i i'm just feeling like you're um, tongue-tied and, and nervous and you get fluster and you might flush and turn red when they're around or when you think about them because I feel like your desire for them and your feelings for them can be a little bit overwhelming. Okay, so that's for singles. Um, I'm feeling as if um, for those who are in a relationship, okay, if you're together with somebody, uh, you and your partner have like some you're kind of like at a major crossroads not because of the relationship but you're you're planning to make make some major major moves okay make some major moves and I feel like for some of you um, we have here the two of Pentacles and the two of Pentacles is about juggling juggling jobs juggling responsibilities uh, trying to figure out, you know, do I stay here where it's stable or do I go somewhere else? And I feel like this this, um, this decision, you're trying to think of it. It, it. It's like it doesn't exist in a vacuum. You're not making this decision alone. There's inputs from your partner. There's considerations from your partner that's like coming into the picture. And so like you're you're trying to make all the pieces fit. Okay, and that's going to become a little bit more apparent when I talk about the next image that I see. Make all the picture, uh, like the the pieces, fit together, so that you can, you know, implement some type of a plan. So there's a lot of mulling over. There's a lot, a lot of communication. And then I also feel as well. There's a, a sense of like temptation, temptation. Okay, you might be in one relationship and uh, you're captivated by another person. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of like earth and and uh, water, so like another earth sign, um, 
Virgo, um, Taurus, Capricorn, and water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So you might be in a relationship with one of those signs, and then you're like um, fascinated or, or interested in another person, okay? And so you're trying to, you know, figure out what course of action to take, what you should do. Um, do I stay in this relationship or do I jump into another relationship? So I feel like there, there's a lot of relationship energy really um, just um, occupying a lot of your mind space, okay? And, and um, you know you're very good at compartmentalizing. You know, when you're at work, you put on your work hat and then everything else that's not work related kind of falls away. And then when it, the work day is over, you take off that hat and then you go home and that's when you think about all the other areas of your life. So you're, you're very able to um, compartmentalize. But I do feel there's a relationships, um, thoughts of relationship, decisions about relation, relationships and things like that might be occupying a, the majority of your time for this month. Um, so that's what I'm seeing here. The second image that I saw is, um, I see this jigsaw puzzle. It's a scene of like, um, a tsunami, like a, an ocean, you know, waves coming in, not like a giant tidal wave, but it looks almost like those Japanese, you know, uh, pictures of like tsunamis, like, uh, oceans, ocean waves. Okay. It's, it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's incomplete. Uh, the edge is already filled in but the pieces are missing from the inside. And so I see somebody's hands putting the pieces together and the person finds this piece and the color scheme is very, very similar to something that's um, part of the wave over here. The, the color scheme is really similar. So you know how when you do jigsaw puzzles, uh, the strategy is do the edges and then, you know, um, group all the pieces together that have similar color schemes and then go from there, right? So that's the way I, th I feel like a systematic Virgo's mind would work. Like pieces should fit together. And so the hand holds up, and I think it's a guy's hand. Uh, it's a man's hand. And he finds this piece, and he's like, oh, it's going here. And then he tries to fit it in, uh, rotates it. It doesn't fit. And he's all like, but it has to. The colors are so similar. And so he puts it down and he was like, maybe there's something wrong with the laser that we're used to cut the pieces. So he starts, you know, turns his hand into a fist and starts like pounding on it to make sure it fits. But sure enough, it doesn't fit. And so he puts it aside and you see it in fast motion where he finds pieces and everything's filled in. And at the very end, there's one piece missing. And then he goes, oh, that piece that I put aside, now it goes here. And then the scene just kind of cuts out. So what I'm seeing here, like I mentioned before, you know, um, there's a time and a place for everything. And everything works when it's supposed to. And everything falls into place when it's supposed to. If we, you know, try to change that logic and try to fit something where it doesn't belong, and we try to stomp it and, and pound it in, it's still going to resist, okay? So I, I definitely feel like there was something that you thought was really right, like in your hearts of hearts, in your mind, no matter how much you mull it over, you're just like, it's perfect, it has to work, it has to work. And for some reason, it didn't work. For whatever reason that you couldn't even uh, understand, I guess that reason was never shown to you and it, it, even till now, you know, whenever that situation happened in your life, even now you're still perplexed about it and you're just like, well, it didn't work in the past, you know, and I don't know why it didn't work. What will happen now to make things work? So I feel almost like this, you know, um, it's like a infinity loop, you know, this, this things coming back full circle where you're reminded of a time where you try something and you were so 100% sure that, well, the colors are similar, the edges are similar, why didn't it fit? And now a similar situation is coming around and you're just like, 
What if it doesn't fit this time? What if it flops on me? Right? Um, and so I, I feel like there's something coming around full circle. Okay? And whatever didn't work out before is going to work out now. Because in the past, you forced it. You pounded it in. And I feel almost like you were so focused heavily on the, the, the details, on the, um, I, I, I want to say like you were, you might have been focused on, uh, I, I guess like it, it, it's sort of like wanting something so badly and, and making sure that it fit even when the physical environment was not right. Does that make sense? And I mean, it got to the point where the man with the jigsaw puzzle, he was like using his fist to kind of like hammer it in, but it didn't fit. And so they're telling you whatever that situation was that, that made you feel like you doubted your intuition, you doubted your judgment because you were so sure, whatever it was, it's coming back around. And now you're in a much better space where you're not trying to make things fit, where you're not trying to force things, where you are operating from a place of wisdom and allowing. And that's when the situation is like, it's right, okay? So there's a time and a place for everything. We have to be able to see the big picture in order to understand how the parts all fit together. Does that make sense? And the reason I say that is you have some, some two cards here that are back to back five of swords and then the six of swords oh, I'm sorry five of wands excuse me and then the six of wands okay so oh I'm sorry this is the five of swords so the five of swords is a situation where we're kind of like arguing bickering and the sword energy denotes communication, thought processes, mental processes that might have been faulty, where no one is really getting a word in, everyone is bickering, everyone is trying to, you know, be right, trying to prove that they're right. And with the five energies, five indicates some major turning point, some major change, okay? And then we have here the six of wands, which is a victory. There's a situation here in the past, it was punctuated with a lot of conflict, with a lot of faulty reasoning, with a lot of just like, um, you know, I believe this, even though I haven't really done the research, I still believe this. You might have been dealing with people like this in your environment, where the energy that they kick up around them was like a, a repellent for good things to come. Okay, there might have been an environment that you were in where, you know, let's say this, okay, um, a lot, if you're like ever walking or running on a dirt path, right, if you're running or walking on a dirt path with every footstep or with every step, it kicks up a little bit of dust, right? And so just imagine energetically when you're in this type of environment where people are constantly bickering, constantly shuffling around, moving around, trying to prove each other, prove themselves right, trying to one up the other person, like if it's like laden with a lot of chaos and a lot of activity and a lot of competition, it creates a major dust cloud, like a major sphere or a major environment where there's a lot of, you know, negativity, negative energies. And so it repels, you know, you wouldn't want to walk over where that dirt cloud has been stirred up, right? And so this environment was a repellent for good things to come in the picture. And so whatever it was that you were trying to do, I feel like it, it, it flopped down. It didn't have a lot of support. It just um, couldn't see the light of day. It couldn't rise above the dust cloud, okay? So I'm a little bit inclined to say that the people you might have had around you might not have been good for your growth. The and work environment and the, the colleagues or the, the energies just surrounding the work environment was not conducive for good things to, to, uh, to attract good things or to even, you know, be in alignment with you. And so I see you turning your back to the situation, okay? 
no more bickering, no more pettiness, no more conflict. I'm turning my back. And as soon as you decide to turn your back, we have a lot of victory, a lot of success coming through. And I'm almost seeing like um, one after another, like a series of successes one after another because you decided to turn your back. You decided to kind of retreat from this, from the ground, okay? Climbing up into the tree, elevating yourself, seeing above the dust cloud, and being able to operate and function from above that, that cloud of negativity, and to be able to, you know, warm yourself in the sun, and to be able to attract a lot of success, okay? So what I'm seeing here is there has been a major change. Whatever didn't work out in the past, I do feel a lot of, you know, success, victory is coming in as a result of you, you know, needing to change this environment in your life, okay? There's some major news associated with it as well. We have here the Page of Swords, and um, the Page Energies are um, snippets and messages coming through, and I do feel like um, resolution, okay, like a... Uh, being wanting to make a, a decision but not having all the information waiting on communication from another source so that you can decide which option to go with okay so I do feel for many of you there's some major swift communication coming through this month in order to splice through that dust cloud and to be able to let things settle and for you to decide on major changes in your life okay and what I'm seeing as well for many of you this is like uh, leaving troublesome friendships, colleagues, um, petty people, I would say. Um, argumentative, petty people. People who are just like, um, you know, what's funny is um, I don't see gossip and slander and things like that. I don't see that in here. I just feel with this Five of Swords, it's like people who constantly want to be right who have their their daily agenda is just wanting to prove themselves right, wanting to show other people how smart they are and um, things like that, okay? So I feel like, you know, you're, you're turning your back away from this. And you might at a point, uh, at this point in your life, no longer feeding into this, no longer interested, like, like you're just disinterested in what's over here because you're seeing the bigger picture. You're looking at things from a higher vantage point and you're leaving these mortal to, you know, these mortals to squabbles among them as a head of a fish. It wants to be in the sea. And yet the, the, the body had no choice but to adapt, to grow legs so that it could walk on land because there, this environment is very parched. There's no emotional fulfillment. There's no spiritual fulfillment. It's just very parched. And so it's waiting for the rains to come and wash it away and, and to carry it to sea. And that's what I feel is coming here with the tower. Sweeping changes, this big tsunami coming in uh, and, and carrying you back into the sea where you can, you know, resume your form as a mermaid. Okay, like the traditional standard mermaid form, face of a woman, body of a fish. And she is now in an environment where there's um, water, where there's life, where there's emotional fulfillment. And so there's something major here that will be coming through in the month of December. And I do feel like it's going to bring you to an environment where you belong. Because wherever you are right here is not meant for you. It's, um, there's no growth potential. There's a lot of dryness. And I'm seeing like, you know, just like, it's an environment that's very dry. So for many of you, you might be changing jobs. You might be moving from a really dry, arid environment like the desert to a place that's uh, in the tropics, that's by the sea, that's uh, a lot more, I, I want to say like, it's just a lot more conducive for growth, okay? And we're not just talking about like, um, like a place that's green and lush and things like that. We're talking about emotional, spiritual growth. We're talking as well, career growth. We're talking as well, you know, being in a new environment where you're able to develop to your full potential, where people appreciate all that you have to offer and they don't take you for granted pretty much okay so that's what I'm seeing here um, once again it's like the change is long coming 
but it's going to swoop in very, very quick. And that's a contradiction. But for whatever reason, I just feel like you've been waiting for it for quite some time, but it's going to come in very unexpectedly. You're kind of uh, bookended by two major arcana cards here. We have the Hermit, taking time to yourself, being deep in contemplation, and really figuring out, you know, what's the next step in your life. And then once you have that figured out, once you've reached that space of wisdom, that's when the tower will bring about these changes that you've been wanting for a very long time. All right. So I'm going to leave it at that. I do wish you all the best for the month of December. Once again, I apologize for the delay with this reading. I hope it finds you well still and I hope it is relevant and applicable 